I wish you a Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I knew you wanted to do that. I want to let you know that your presence here today changes things. It changes the world by the act of inviting God into your heart and into your thoughts and then back into your community. And we all say, Amen. You may stand as we sing, O little town of Bethlehem, that's number 64 in this book. Liz is saying yes. I think that's where my sense of awe of God was born. And now we'll start with our call to worship. With eyes wide open and our ears on edge. In the light of winter's moon with the North Star lighting the way. With folks and friends we love, with strangers we have just met. We gather and come in the holy heaven, for this time and this place. Let us sing together, a candle is burning to the tune of Away in a Manger, and we'll sing verses 1 and 5, that's number 6 in the hymn.
To a people longing for hope and yearning for deliverance, the prophet Isaiah declared, the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and his name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tonight, we come seeking hope, peace, joy, and love. And we find these things in a child. God made flesh as a baby in a manger. A baby who is both the beginning and the end of our salvation, who dwells with us now, even now, our Emmanuel, God is with us. And together, let us read. We live as people, people in the infantry, the infantry, the infantry the 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 of the light that shines in the lost and broken places, as a day for the day when we will live in the fullness of God's kingdom. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, our just peace, our fierce joy, the love that transforms us, and Jesus Christ, our wonderful light. May the light burning in our hearts guide us, comfort us, protect us, and tend us in all seasons and circumstances, reminding us that day and night, in the light and in the darkness, God is with us, our restorer, has come. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let us sing together, Voices United, number 71, Twas in the Moon of Winter Time.
our prayer for illumination. Loving God, we have heard this story before, the story of a star in the sky and the baby, baby who was laid in a manger. We have heard this story before, passed down in hopeful whispers through the generations. So this night, as we lean our hearts and our ears closer to you, we ask that you would make room in our souls to hear this story again. And we say, Make room for us who wonder. Make room for heartache and compassion. Make room in our hearts for you. Pull us into the narrative that we might hear the truths in this ancient word as if it were the first time. For we know that you are still speaking. So speak to us again this night. We are listening. We are already making room. Amen. This evening's scripture verse is from Isaiah 9, verses 1 through 4 and 6 and 7. Reading from the Common English Bible. Nonetheless, those who are in distress won't be exhausted. At an earlier time, God cursed the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, but later he glorified the way of the sea, the, the far side of the Jordan and the Galilee of the nations. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in pitch dark land, light has dawned. You have made the nation great. You have increased its joy. They rejoiced before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice, as on the day of Midian, you shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders and the rod of their oppressor. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Inter Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. The Gospel reading is Luke 2, verses 1 through 20, Common English Bible. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quinius was the governor of Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and the family line, he went up to the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign to you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of heavenly forces were with the angel praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's confirm that the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, 
They reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. Everything happened just as they had been told. Herein lies wisdom. Thanks be to God. Let us sing verses one and two of the first Noel, and that's in Voices United number 91. So the Christmas homily, and you may have been wondering about the artwork. We have been going through Advent, and we've been in a series called How Does a Weary World Rejoice? And there are original art pieces. So the older woman that you saw um, uh, cradling, she was cradling Mary and baby Joseph, and that was the artist's image of God. So we had God cradling Jesus in the center and Mary on the exterior. Known, known is the title of this Christmas homily. Christmas is all about stories. We celebrate Christmas because of the story read for us by Mike this evening. And every year we hear it over again and sometimes like a piece of cheap jewelry plated in gold or silver, we let the wonder and awe of the story fleck away and fall off. But there are, of course, some things about the Christmas story that we often don't hear about. And Kate Grounds provides some details for us. They tell the real message of Christmas, which is that Christ, or Jesus, was born for us. Really for us. There are no small players in God's kingdom. And I hope these will add to your sense of Christmas wonder that I was referring to earlier. So Nazareth, during this time period, was no bigger than a dot on a map with an estimated population of anywhere from 500 to 2,000 residents. So not only did God choose a young teenage girl from humble upbringings or beginnings to carry the savior of the world, but he chose a girl from Nazareth nonetheless. And while I was 
rereading the Isaiah reading from tonight that Mike read for us, I realized that Nazareth was one of the places that was not blessed by God until that time of the Isaiah reading. So it, it was coming, right? It was coming into the future that Nazareth would be redeemed. So what could come, right? This is why in John 1, when a guy named Nathaniel heard that the long-awaited Messiah was, in fact, Jesus from Nazareth, he responded, Nazareth, can anything good come from Nazareth? To put it in today's terms, this means that God passed over the New York City and Chicago of their day and instead chose to kickstart the great plan of salvation in the kind of town you'd only stop in when you are running out of gas on the way home from vacation. People in antiquity were more shocked in God's choosing of Jesus' hometown than Walter Hobbes finding out that he had a son who was an adult elf from the North Pole. <laughs> Our resplendent, creative God never stops using the element of surprise. So our second fact, back in the time of Jesus' birth, there was a strong belief in the power of astrology. Pagan astrologers who went around interpreting the signs of the stars were very well respected and frequently sought out in the Greco-Roman world. Although they would have seen themselves as religiously superior to pagan astrologers, even the Jews, God's chosen people, jumped on the astrology jumped on the astrology can predict the future bandwagon so many rulers feel, feared astrological signs of their demise which they believed were directly linked to their political downfall this is why in the bible when herod the great hears the wise men talking about a star they will follow that will lead them to the king of the jews he is fearful. He feared the star would lead the wise men to the future king who would overtake his throne. In choosing to use a star to direct wise men to Jesus, God was already hinting that even these pagan astrologers would be blessed by the birth of God's son. It's a pretty cool start to the epic Christmas story. And the third point is the shepherds who were present at the birth of Jesus would have been looked down upon by their holier neighbors. And one theologian says this part of the Christmas story would have challenged the values of many religious people who despised shepherds whose work kept them from participating in the religious activities of their communities. You see, it was unclean work with animals. If anybody expected to be invited to the birthday party of the long-awaited Messiah, it was the overly religious people, not the lowly shepherds who were too busy literally counting sheep. Once again, we see God completely flipping the social order on its head and hinting to the Jews that Jesus would be a blessing for all of mankind, not just the religiously superior. And finally, Kate says, while in its simplest version, the Christmas story is nothing short of spectacular. Learning the details surrounding the birth of Christ has made me, she says, appreciate God's love for humanity that much more. Not only did God humble God's self by sending Jesus to earth, God included the lowly, despised, and looked down upon to be a part of the special day that would forever change history. From the very beginning, God was making it clear that everyone would be offered salvation through Jesus. So as you go about tying or having tied fluffy red or gold or silver bows 
on neatly wrapped packages and compulsively checking to make sure you watch every holiday movie known to humankind. Relish and rest in the fact that the most beautiful story ever told is so much more beautiful than we ever thought possible. Amen. Amen. Let us sing together, Voices United, number 75, while the shepherds watched their flocks. While shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. Angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for me to dread. be seated now we've come to our time of offering and our opening offering prayer is come now and kneel before the Christ child bring all that you are and all that you have offer your gifts in wonder and surprise and awe offer your gifts in joy and delight and the ways that you may donate or make your offering will be on the screen. You can enjoy this music.
We say, receive these tokens of our gratitude for your love incarnate in the babe of Bethlehem. May they breathe magic back into a world that needs a sense of wonder and joy. And now we'll turn to the time of Holy Communion. We begin. Holy God, we have been waiting a long time for this night, for the joy and the quiet of Christmas Eve, for the sound of the angel chorus, for the old familiar songs. We have carried weary hearts through the last four weeks of Advent, longing for the peace and hope of this night. And now we're finally here. As we dance to the table of wonder and grace, God in community, holy in one, let us pray in the words that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours forever. Amen. Here in the silence and the singing with carols and candlelight, we gather around the table of joy. As you pour out your spirit upon the most precious gifts of bread and cup, as we feast upon the bread, we remember a young pregnant girl named Mary and think how we would serve those who are expecting, those who cannot have a child, those who have lost children, those who are parenting single-handedly. As we drink from the cup, we think of a worried father named Joseph, and our prayers are with those who assemble toys this night, as well as those who will work this night to pay for food and medicine for their family. In this season of family and friends, we pray for those whose closest companion is loneliness those separated from loved ones, those who hear no music, joy, or hope in their lives. And on this night, when we sing of the babe in the manger, as the shadow of the cross is cast by the stars, we proclaim that mystery called incarnation. Christ is our light, and we will join the angels in singing the good news. Christ is our life. And we wait for the joy of his return. Jesus was born into a world that loves to turn people away, a world with shut doors and closed hearts, a world that loves to say, there's no room for you. Friends, that will not happen to you here because Jesus spent his life making room. He made room for tax collectors and children. He made room for 5,000 people to sit down and eat together. He made room for Samaritan women, Jews, and Gentiles. He made room for the sick, for the outcast, for the unclean. Jesus was always pulling up a seat, saving space, making room for people, and he has made room for you. So come to this table. Come with your faith and your doubt. Come with your questions and your hopes. Come with your grief and your love. Just come because there is room for you here. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome. Could my communion servers come forward, please? This table is the Lord's table. It does not belong to the United Church of Canada. So everyone is welcome here. The table is set. You may come forward.
our communion prayer. God of all, you are always pulling up chairs, welcoming the children, the tax collectors, the outcast. At your dinner party, no one gets turned away. Help us to carry that inclusive spirit into the rest of our lives, for we know that love like that is what turns weariness into joy. With grateful hearts, we pray. Amen. So you have your candles. I always keep that up and We'll begin our candlelight liturgy and then I will light from the Christ candle. And I will begin at the end of each row and then you will light in. Do you remember how to light the candles one to another? So when you have your lit candle, you hold your lit candle up and the unlit candle will lean towards you and pick up the light and so on. So that the, the candle does not drip onto you when it is lit. Let's begin. The light from even a single flame makes watching an easier task. Christ's flame reminds us that God is with us. May we live as people strengthened by God's hope. May we live as people encouraged by God's peace. May we live as people abiding in God's joy. May we live as people sharing God's Arthur, do you have an extra candle? Yeah, right. 